Good morning, first grade. I miss you. Today, we get to make a value mountain range. And what's really neat about value is based on how hard you press on a crayon or colored pencil, it can make things look like they're really close or really far away, which is really neat and a little secret trick that artists do. So let's get started. All right, what you're going to need is your favorite colored crayon or colored pencil, a black marker, but if you don't have markers, a black crayon will work just fine. We are going to be making our value mountains. And the first thing you're going to want to do is to draw your mountains. When you're drawing them, you're going to do three lines because we want our mountains to look really close and then go slowly off into the distance. So the one up here, I'm going to do a zigzag line, but they're gonna be kind of spread out. And it's okay if your zigzag doesn't look like mine. But I want to add a tip at the top where snow is so I remember not to color it in. Then I'm going to, going to do my next mountain range, which is a little further away than this. I'm going to add my snowy banks, because at the very top it's super cold. And then one more. in my snowy banks. The reason why we want to do value is because up close I can see the color really well. But as I look off far away into the distance, the color starts to get really light, almost blurry. Value is a really neat tool to use as artist. They can help make things look more round or far away. And how we're going to achieve that, how we're going to do that, is by pressing down really hard for the first set of mountains. The best way for this to work is that there will be no white showing, except for our snow, and press down as hard as you can. I chose red because it's my favorite color, but you can use any color you'd like. You can use purple, blue, pink, orange, yellow, any color. Choose your favorite. If your hand starts to hurt, that's because you're using the muscles in your hands and fingers that you might not use that often. You can go ahead and just kind of open them and stretch them out. It's making you stronger. For my next set of mountains, since they're further back, they're behind this one, I'm going to draw a little lighter. I don't want to draw as light as I can because that's for these mountains that are super far away. This needs to be somewhat in the middle between really light and really dark, medium. So I'm not pressing down as hard as I can, a lot lighter and a lot nicer on my hand. But I'm also not drawing super, super, super light. I'm still putting a little bit of pressure down and I want to color all the white spaces again so that it looks nice and complete and working hard. If we were painting with red paint, what could we add to the red paint to make it lighter? as we go to each mountain. Yeah, we could add white to make our red a little lighter. And then by this mountain range, it'd probably be really a really pretty pink. Now it's time for the very last mountain, the one that's furthest away, and it's going to be super, super light. If you've realized that as you color, this mountain range, that it almost looks really similar to this. You can go back over this one, make it a little darker. 
I'm going to go ahead and color this one in. Now I've got my mountain ranges. I'm going to color my blue sky to finish it off. I'm coloring as best I can so that there's not as much white. And I hope to see you all do the same, taking your time and being really responsible with your materials. And there we go, we have our value mountain ranges, starting with the ones that are really close to us and going further back just on how we use pressure on what we're drawing with. Isn't that cool? I hope you have a lot of fun. Can't wait to see them. Goodbye.